Hi, everyone. Welcome to ATSDR's Public Health Assessment Training Series, sponsored by the Office of Capacity Development and Applied Prevention Science, or OCDAPS, and the Office of Community Health and Hazard Assessment. I'm David Millard, the Associate Director for Science for OCDAPS. Before we start, I have a couple of housekeeping items. First, this webinar is recorded and we plan to release the recording to the public. So the attendees are muted during the presentation. If you have questions, please type them in the chat box. At the end of the presentation, we will answer your questions. And after that, if we have time, we will go to live Q&A. I'd like to take a moment to mention the members of the shower model team, which includes staff from ATSDR and Appletree. They are Karen Scruton, Emery De Pasquale, Tariq Ahmed from New Jersey, Teresa Foster, Andy Dudley, Tanya Burke, and Jason Sautner. We're supported by Will Morgan with Eastern Research Group, who has a major role in the shower model's success. The current model handles residential scenarios. The team is currently working on adding school and occupational scenarios to the model, releasing the next version in 2023. I'll now turn it over to Will with ERG, who will show you how to import the shower model results into FAST for calculating hazard quotients and cancer risks. Thanks, David. Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to the webinar. My name is Will Morgan, and I work for ERG, a contractor for APSDR. Today, we'll be talking about how to use the shower model exposure calculator that was recently released as part of FAST version 2.1. This training is a follow-up to last month's training where we walked through version three of the shower model, which ATSDR released recently. If you missed the first training, I highly encourage you to go find it on ATSDR's Fagum website and watch it when you get the chance, since it provides some good background on what the shower model is and how to use it. For today, I'll quickly show you how to export results from the shower model, and then we'll spend most of our time talking through how to import those results into FAST for further evaluation. Before we get started, though, I want to go over some acronyms and abbreviations that I'll use during the training today. These include RME for reasonable maximum exposure, CTE for central tendency exposure, EPC for exposure point concentration, ADS for associate director for science, SME for subject matter expert, and TPO for technical project officer. So you can see here on my desktop that I have version three of the shower model open to the program's home screen. For those of you that missed the first training, the shower and shower model stands for the shower and household water use exposure model. It has that name because the program simulates inhalation and dermal exposures to contaminants in household water, including water used in showers, sinks, and other common appliances. If you don't already have it, the shower model is a desktop application which you can access by sending a request to showermodel at cdc.gov. On this screen, you have the option of running a new scenario, opening an existing scenario, or accessing additional program resources. I'm going to click the Run New Scenario button so you can see the full process of generating results before you import those results into FAST. So this is the site information screen where you enter details about the site that you're evaluating, like its name and location. The only required field on this screen is the site name. So I'm going to enter Example Site as the site name and then click the Next button, which takes you to the simulation type screen. On the simulation type screen, you can pick between running a default or a custom scenario. I want to show you the steps for a default scenario first, so let's leave that selected and click the next button to go onto the chemical information screen. For our default scenario, let's simulate a house with a tetrachloroethylene concentration of 100 micrograms per liter in water. I'll type PCE into the chemical name field and select tetrachloroethylene in the drop-down menu that appears. And then I'll type 100 into the concentration and water field. That's everything the program needs to generate default results. So I'll go ahead and click the Run Default Scenario button to run the default scenario. Once the program finishes running the scenario, it loads the default report screen that you see here. 
to export a data file for import into FAST, I'll click, I'll click the export to FAST button located at the bottom of the screen. Clicking the export to FAST button brings up the save menu where you'll need to identify a location on your computer to save the file. You'll see that the file is a shower model FAST export file, which has the extension .shower model FAST export. The default file name includes the first 10 characters of your site name, followed by an underscore, then either a D or a C for a default or custom scenario, followed by another underscore, and then the first 10 letters of the name of the contaminant you're evaluating. You can change the file name if you like, but be sure not to change the extension .shower model fast export, since otherwise you won't see it when you try to load it into fast. I'll save the file in a folder I made on my desktop for us to use later. Once the file is saved, we're ready to open FAST and run the FAST shower model exposure calculator. Right. So while that's exporting, I'll bring up a browser where I already have FAST loaded to its home screen. If you don't have access to FAST yet, you can email fast at cdc.gov to request access. On the FAST home screen, you'll see buttons on the left and right for navigating to different different places in FAST. The shower model exposure calculator is one of the options available under the exposure calculator button. I'll click that button to bring up a submenu that shows the different exposure calculators available. In the submenu, I'll click the, inge the inhalation, ingestion, and dermal text in the shower model box to bring up the shower model exposure calculator. The program loads to the shower model exposure calculator's import scenario data screen. You know you're in the right place if you see exposure calculator, shower model, inhalation and dermal with fast ingestion written out in the banner towards the top of the screen. And you also see shower model, inhalation, ingestion and dermal highlighted in green in the tiles at the top of the screen. On this screen, the first thing we need to do is import the data file we just exported from the shower model. Below the import scenario, Scenario Data tab, you'll see a blue button that says Choose File. I'll click this button, and navigate to where I saved the file we just exported, and then I'll select it and click Open to load it into the program. You'll see the file name appear in a gray box where the Choose File button used to be. At this stage, the data file is loaded into FAST, but the data aren't yet imported. If I picked the wrong file, I could click the red X button to clear it out and select another one. Since this was the correct file, though, I'll click the blue import button to import its data into the program. Once FAST finishes the import, the blue import button turns gray, and you'll see a bunch of new information appear on screen. To the right, you'll see a big blue button that says Download Original Shower Model Report which you can click to download a copy of the original shower model report for your scenario. You don't have to download the original report, but it's provided here as an extra resource in case you want to look back over the shower model results for your scenario. Beneath that is a notes field where you can type in additional information about your scenario. Next to the label for the notes field, you'll find a little blue circle with an eye in it, which is an information icon for the notes field. Information icons like this one are scattered throughout FAST and generally provide additional information for a nearby feature. For example, if I click the one next to the notes field, it brings up a short message which says that information entered in the notes field will appear towards the beginning of the FAST shower model report. I click the little X at the top right of the message to close it. Beneath the notes field, you'll find the scenario drop down menu. You'll see here that it comes preloaded with the four morning showers default scenario selected. In the shower model, the default scenario is a reasonable maximum exposure, four person household scenario where all four people take morning showers. When you run a default shower model simulation, though, the program also runs additional scenarios for houses with one, two, and three people for extra information. The shower model exposure calculator only lets you view results for one household at a time. So you'll need to select the specific household you want to look at using this drop down. I'll click it so you can see the options. If you want to look at results for the three person household, select the three morning shower scenario. If you want to look at results for the two person household, select the two morning shower scenario 
and so on. I'll click out of the menu to keep the full morning shower scenario selected for now since it's the default. To the right of the drop down menu, you'll see a grayed out or set to default button. This button will activate if you select a different scenario from the drop down menu or if you come back to this screen after visiting the next one. Clicking this button resets all the exposure calculator screens to their default values and resets the evaluation to the point we're at now where we've loaded a scenario but haven't done anything with it yet. You can use this button if you make changes on later screens but want to reset all the parameters back to their default values again. Beneath these buttons, you'll, you'll find four accordions that contain tables of the data you imported. All the data in these tables are read directly from the shower model fast export file that we loaded into the program. I'll click each one of these accordions and walk you through them one by one, starting with the scenario information accordion. The scenario information accordion gives you basic information about the site and scenario you ran in the shower model. The site information section gives the site name and address, the application version number, and information about the selected contaminant. Beneath that, the model input information section includes information about the chemical and its properties, the exposure routes simulated, water and outdoor air concentrations you input into the shower model, and information about the scenario you selected. Here, you can see that we're looking at results for a four morning shower scenario and that the target person in the scenario is the most highly exposed person. The shower model provides results for the target person in each scenario, which in this case is person four because they are the most highly exposed person. In the default scenario, person four is the most highly exposed person because they take a 15 minute shower after the other three people take 10 minute showers. You can see here where the table lists a 15 minute morning shower as the target person's main activity. The activities for other people in the house aren't mentioned, but you can look back at the original shower model report if you want to see more about those. Next, we have the air daily exposure concentration accordion, which I can click to expand. The table in this accordion again identifies the target person in the scenario and their main activities, and then it gives you the arm average daily inhalation exposure concentration for the target person. In this scenario, the average daily inhalation exposure concentration for the target person is 72 micrograms per cubic meter. FAST will use this number to generate inhalation hazard quotients and cancer risk for the target person, which we'll see in a bit. Next up is the exposure groups accordion, which I'll expand by clicking on it. The table here shows you the exposure groups in your scenario and their parameters imported from the shower model. The shower model doesn't specify an exposure group for the target person in each scenario, but instead it assumes that the target person could belong to any of these groups. If you know that some of the exposure groups don't apply to a particular scenario, you can filter those out on a site specific screen that I'll show you later on. One other thing to note for those of you familiar with FAST is that in the shower model, pregnant and breastfeeding women are combined into a single exposure group because they have the same inhalation and dermal parameters. You'll see them separated out elsewhere in this exposure calculator though, because they can have different ingestion parameters and because FAST normally provides results for them separately. So keep that in mind as we're going through the next few screens. The last accordion is the inhalation and dermal doses accordion, which I'll click to expand. The table here gives you the dermal dose for each exposure group and it shows the inhalation average daily exposure concentration converted to a daily inhalation dose for each exposure group. These inhalation doses are calculated in the shower model and are provided as additional information here, but they're not currently used anywhere in the shower model exposure calculator. The dermal doses are used, however, and are the basis for the dermal results you'll see later on. One more thing to note here is that you can't change any of the information we just went through in these accordions and FAST because it was all exported directly from the shower model. If you want to change anything in these accordions, you'll need to rerun your scenario in the shower model, generate a new result file, and import that data into FAST. Now that we've looked at all the data imported from the shower model, we're ready to start analyzing it. I'll click the inhalation and dermal doses accordion again to minimize it. And then click the select exposure route button to move on to the exposure route screen. The exposure route screen opens to two radio buttons that describe alternate scenarios for the household you're evaluating. The top radio button 
is for sites where residents are both using and drinking household water, whereas the bottom button is for households where residents are using the water but not drinking it. The first button reflects a site where people use their water for bathing, drinking, and for other things, but the bottom button reflects a house where people get their drinking water from somewhere else. If you, if you select the first radio button, the exposure calculator will return inhalation, dermal, and ingestion results for your scenario. But if you select the second radio button, you'll only get inhalation and dermal results because people aren't drinking the water. I'll go ahead and select the first radio button where residents are using and drinking the water so you can see all the results that the exposure calculator can provide. Once you've made a selection on this screen, you'll notice a few things. First, in the navigation tab, you'll see that we now have a blue check mark to indicate that we filled out everything that's needed on this screen. The import scenario data tab also has a blue check mark to indicate that it's complete as well. These check marks and the navigation tabs work the same way they do elsewhere in FAST. The screen we're currently on is indicated by the light blue tab. Screens we've already visited have dark gray tabs and screens we haven't visited yet have light gray tabs. At the bottom of the screen, you'll see that the enter site specific parameters button is now active and that there's now an active run quick summary button beneath it. The run quick summary button will only appear for default shower model scenarios. If you run a custom scenario, you're already performing a site specific analysis, so your only option is to enter site specific parameters. If you imported a default scenario, though, you have the option of clicking the run quick summary button to generate hazard quotients and cancer risk using default fast parameters. I'll click the run quick summary button now so you can see what those look like. If health guidelines are available, FAST will calculate hazard quotients or HQs and cancer risks for the, for the different exposure routes associated with the bathing and drinking scenario we just selected. The shower model presents results for inhalation first, then results for the ingestion and dermal exposure routes combined. Below the combined ingestion and dermal results are dermal only and ingestion only results similar to some of the other exposure calculators in FAST. The quick summary results that you see here summarize whether the concentrations and doses in the scenario were high enough to generate hazard quotients greater than or equal to one or cancer risks greater than or equal to one times 10 to the negative six. The tables are set up similar to the quick summary tables in the other FAST exposure calculators. So any hazard quotients greater than or equal to one or cancer risks greater than or equal to one times 10 to the negative 10 to the negative six will be highlighted in yellow. You can see in this scenario that we had hazard quotients greater than one and cancer risks of level one times 10 to the negative six for all of the exposure routes considered. The only exposure route that didn't have hazard quotients above one was the dermal only route, which had a maximum hazard quotient of 0 0.31. Scrolling back up, you'll see a few additional items that you can click on here. Right beneath the quick summary heading, you'll see the text, the quick summary uses default parameter values from the shower model and fast, and that the last part of that sentence is highlighted in blue. That blue text is a link, and if you click on it, it'll generate a Word document that shows you the default fast parameters that were used to generate the quick summary results that we're looking at right now. Below that link, you'll find two buttons. Clicking collapse all will collapse the four accordions down below that show the quick summary tables and clicking the show results for shower model exposure groups based on fast exposure parameters button will also collapse the four quick summary accordions and bring up four new ones that show individual results for ATSDR standard exposure groups. I'll skip the collapse all button for now and click the show results button so you can see what the detailed fast result tables look like since those are what we're really interested in. When you click the button, the four quick summary accordions collapse and four result table accordions appear beneath them. Each accordion will have three result tables within it, a chronic table, an intermediate table, and an acute table. If you've used FAST before, you'll be familiar with how these tables are laid out. The left column lists the exposure groups analyzed, and the next two columns give the CTE and RME adjusted EPCs for these exposure groups. 
Since the shower model scenarios are all residential scenarios, the EPCs you see here are the scenarios average daily air exposure concentrations ad adjusted by an exposure factor of one. The next two columns provide the CTE and RME hazard quotients, and then the next four columns give the CTE and RME cancer risks along with the exposure durations. ED under the cancer risk heading represents the exposure duration. So you can see that the CTE exposure duration lasts a total of 12 years, and that the RME exposure duration lasts a total of 33 years. The RME cancer risk field includes both a 33-year adult cancer risk and a cancer risk calculated assuming 21 years of childhood and 12 years of adulthood. At the top of the inhalation tables, there's a radio button that you can click to display the inhalation concentrations in either micrograms per cubic meter or parts per billion. I'll click the PPB radio button to display the results in parts per billion. You can see that the EPCs change to units of parts per billion, as did the health guideline information provided in the light blue bar just below the column headings. The hazard quotients and cancer risks stayed the same, though, since these are the same no matter which units are used for the calculations. Scrolling down, you'll see the other result tables generated. The intermediate and acute inhalation tables include only hazard quotients, but not cancer risks, since cancer risks are calculated only for chronic exposures. In the combining doses for ingestion and dermal tables, the combined doses are the sum of the ingestion and dermal doses. If you click on one of the doses, you can see the contribution from each exposure route. I'll click on the CTE dose for the birth to less than one year exposure group so you can see the ingestion and dermal contributions for that result. Here you can see this combined dose of 0.0081 milligrams per kilograms per day is the sum of 0.0065 milligrams per kilogram per day from the ingestion exposure route and 0.0016 milligrams per kilogram per day from the dermal exposure route. These numbers will match the ones you'll find in the ingestion and dermal tables down below. You can generally click on any number in these result tables to see a pop-up like this one that shows you how the number was calculated. To get rid of a pop-up, just click away from it somewhere else on the screen. The tables also have symbols for footnotes, like the dagger and double dagger you see here. But if you click on them, we'll make the program jump down to the bottom of the screen where you'll find a definition for the footnote. Continuing on down, we have the intermediate and acute exposure tables for the combined ingestion and dermal doses. And after those come the chronic, intermediate, and acute dermal only tables. And after those are the chronic, intermediate, and acute ingestion only tables. At the bottom of the screen, you'll find the definitions for the footnote symbols I mentioned earlier. And beneath those, you'll find a few buttons. The save scenario button lets you save the current scenarios so you can come back to it later using the same methods that you would for other scenarios in FAST. I'm not going to show you how to do that today, but you can refer to the FAST user's guide for more information if you're interested. Next to the save scenario button is a download results button. Clicking on the download results button brings up a pop-up with two options, one that says 508 compliant and one that says HTML. Clicking either of these options will download a Word document to, to your computer that includes the result tables we were just looking at. The HTML button will download a Word document with the tables formatted the same as they are shown on the screen, and the 508 compliant button will download a Word document with 508 compliant versions of the tables. If you plan to use these tables in your public health assessment or health consultation, please download the results as 508 compliant tables. I'm going to click the 508 compliant button to show you what these reports look like, since they're structured a little bit differently from the other 508 compliant reports that FAST generates. After you click the button, it can take a minute for the program to generate the report, but once it's done, it will show up wherever downloaded files normally appear in your browser. I'm using Chrome, so my files will appear down in the bottom left. Other browsers might put a link to the file in the upper right corner, though, so look around if you're having trouble finding it. I'll click the file name to open it up.
When you first open the file, you get a pop-up like this one that says that the document contains fields that may refer to other files. In this case, the document isn't referring to other files, but it does have internal links in the table of contents. So you'll want to click yes to ensure that everything loads correctly. I'll go ahead and click yes so that it can finish loading. One note though, some browsers might open the word port directly in Word rather than giving you that pop-up. If the table of contents fails to load, or if you accidentally clicked no on the pop-up, you may see a message at the top of a report that reads something along the lines of failed to automatically load, press control plus A followed by F9 to manually update the table of contents. If you follow those instructions, the table of, con table of contents should appear right afterwards. You can see here that the file opens up to the report's table of contents. The first part of the report lists out the input parameters and equations used to calculate the fast hazard quotients and cancer risks, and the latter part contains the result tables. You can spend more time looking at the report and its contents on your own, but I want to point you to a new feature in these reports that's not currently there for the other exposure calculators in FAST. Scroll down to the results part of the report, which in this document begins on page nine. Here you'll see some narrative text that wasn't present on screen when we were looking at the quick summary results. Narrative text includes a text box defining the target person and then provides some summary information about the report. On the next page, you'll find a description of the scenario itself. Due to the complexity of the shower model scenarios, the shower model exposure calculator report include some extra information about the scenario you ran and what the results represent beyond what's normally provided in FAST reports. The first few paragraphs summarize the scenario and the results provided. And the last few paragraphs summarize the result tables that appear in the report. These paragraphs also make recommendations about tables to include in your public health assessment document based on the scenario you ran. In general, you won't need to include all the tables from the report in your documents, so you should read this section carefully when you run a scenario to get a sense of the tables that typically are included in public health documents. I'll scroll down so you can see what a 508 compliant table looks like. This is the 508 compliant version of the chronic inhalation table that we were looking at earlier. You can see that it's formatted a bit differently with no merge cells, different colors for print, and so on. All of the result tables in this report are formatted like this, so you can copy and paste them into documents as needed. Also, it's worth noting that you'll get different tables depending on the scenario you select on the exposure route screen and on whether your contaminant is both inhalation and dermal shower model results. For contaminant with both inhalation and dermal results, you'll get 12 tables for the scenario where people are using and drinking household water, you only get six tables if you select the scenario where people aren't drinking the water. For that scenario, you'll get the three inhalation tables and the three dermal tables, but not the ingestion tables or the combined ingestion and dermal tables since no one is drinking the water. Similarly, if a contaminant didn't have inhalation or dermal parameter values in the shower model, the tables for that exposure route won't appear on screen. For example, arsenic only has dermal parameter values in the shower model and doesn't have the parameter values needed to evaluate the inhalation exposure route. If you ran a default shower model scenario with arsenic and ported those results into FAST, you wouldn't have any inhalation tables in the quick summary or in the reports. I'm going to go ahead and minimize this report now and head back to FAST so you can see how to conduct a site-specific analysis. Back in FAST, we're still at the bottom of the quick summary screen, so I'm going to click the Enter Site-Specific Parameters button to move on to the Exposure Group screen. As you might imagine, clicking the enter site specific parameters button means that we're now going to enter site specific parameters for the shower model scenario that we loaded into the program. Even though we loaded a default shower model scenario, we'll use these next few screens to select site specific exposure groups, intake rates, and exposure factors, and use those to calculate site specific results. We might choose this option of combining our default shower model results with a site specific scenario if we knew, for example, that residents used PCE contaminated water for only a certain period of time, say 10 years. In this case, FAST could estimate HQs and cancer risk using an exposure duration of 10 years. 
On the exposure group screen, we can select whichever standard ATSDR exposure groups we want to include in the site-specific analysis. To select all of them, you can click the checkbox next to the exposure group column heading. And to delete, deselect all of them, just click it again. To select just a subset of them, you can click the checkboxes next to the individual exposure groups. If you select multiple child exposure groups, they'll need to be consecutive. For example, if I try selecting the birth to less than one year age group and the two to less than six years age group and click enter intake rates, the program will give me an error message saying that the child exposure groups must be consecutive. FAST has this requirement in all of its exposure calculators to support the calculation of child cancer risks. So if you want to evaluate cancer risk for non-consecutive child exposure groups, you'll need to do separate runs. For our scenario, I'll select all the child exposure groups aged six years and older, along with the adult exposure group and the pregnant and breastfeeding women exposure groups. You can see here that the pregnant and breastfeeding women are separated into the two different exposure groups on this screen, whereas if you recall in the imported shower model scenario data, they were considered together in a single group. Again, that's because pregnant and, pregnant and breastfeeding women have the same inhalation and dermal parameter values in the shower model, but in FAST they can have different water ingestion parameter values, so they're treated separately. Now that we've selected our exposure groups, we're ready to move on. One thing to note before we do though, if you selected the scenario where residents aren't drinking the water, you won't need to enter drinking water intake rates and the button at the bottom of the right, the button at the bottom right of the screen will say enter exposure factors instead of enter intake rates as it does here. In that case, clicking the button will take you onto the exposure factor screen and you'll skip over the intake rates screen. You only need to enter drinking water intake rates if you selected the option where residents are both using and drinking household water on the exposure route screen, like we did for this scenario. Since we're ready to enter those, I'll click the enter intake rates button to go onto the drinking water intake rates screen. On this screen, we'll need to identify drinking water intake rates for all the exposure groups that we selected on the previous screen. Sorry, didn't mean to click that one. All right, go ahead. This screen is set up exactly the same as the intake rate screen in the FAST drinking water exposure calculator. So it should look familiar to you if you've used the drinking water calculator before. In the top left, there's a checked box you can use to select CTE and RME intake rates for all the exposure groups. And you also have the option of entering site-specific intake rates for each exposure group using the boxes in the site-specific intake rates column. We have to use the same type of intake rates for all the standard exposure groups. So either they'll all use default CTE and RME intake rates, or we'll assign site-specific values to all of them. For simplicity, I'll select the option to use default CTE and RME intake rates. To see that the notes field for each exposure group remains active, even after we click the checkbox to use default intake rates. If there are any notes you have for one of the exposure groups that you want to keep track of, you can type those in here. I'll add the phrase example note as a note for the adult exposure groups. So you can see where it shows up on the results screen. Now that we have our drinking water intake rates specified, we're ready to enter our exposure factors. I'll click the enter exposure factors button to take us to the exposure factors screen. On the exposure factors screen, we can identify whether we're looking at chronic, intermediate, or acute exposure scenarios. Chronic scenarios represent exposures of one year or longer. Intermediate scenarios represent exposures that last less than one year. And acute scenarios are for exposures that last less than two weeks. The radio buttons let you choose between looking at all three scenario types, just intermediate and acute scenarios, or just an acute scenario. The page loads with the radio button for all three scenario types selected, but you can change it if needed. In the light blue box to the right, you'll need to enter the exposure frequency parameters for the exposure scenarios you selected. For chronic scenarios, you'll need to enter the days per week, weeks per year, and the number of years over which the exposure occurred. Because the shower model simulates a 24-hour day and outputs an average daily exposure concentration, you don't need to specify the number of hours per day for the exposure since the hours per day are already accounted for. If I click the radio button for intermediate and acute scenarios only, you can see that the years parameter drops out because the exposure occurred over a period of less than one year. 
If I select the, the acute scenario only radio button, all the parameters drop out because the acute scenario exposure factor always equals one. I'm going to go back to the option for chronic, intermediate, and acute scenarios. That option selected the program pre-populates the days per week and weeks per year to the values associated with continuous daily exposures. I'll leave those numbers in place and enter 10 for the number of years to reflect a scenario in which continuous daily exposures occurred over a period of 10 years. Now that we have all the data entered on this screen, we're ready to move on. I'll click the Calculate Results button to generate site-specific results using the scenario parameters we selected. We'll see the program gray out for a second and a progress bar appear at the top of the screen. Once the percentage in that pop-up reaches 100%, the calculations are complete and the program will move on to the results screen. All right, so here we are on the results screen. The save scenario, download results, and download original shower model report buttons at the top of the screen are all ones we saw on earlier screens and they do the same things here that they did before. The only new one is the show input parameters button, which I'll come back to in a minute. Down below these buttons are the result tables. The specific tables you see here will vary depending on the contaminant you're examining, whether or not residents are drinking water in your scenario, and also because of the exposure type option you selected on the exposure factors screen. In this scenario, we still have 12 tables because we selected the option for chronic, intermediate, and acute scenarios on the exposure factor screen. So we get all the same result tables we received in the quick summary results. This first table that we're looking at here is the chronic inhalation exposure table. You'll see that there are two overall headings for the different sides of the table. On the left, under the blue heading that reads default shower model data with site-specific fast exposure parameters, You'll find site-specific results calculated using the site-specific parameters we selected on the previous, these, the previous three screens. In this case, we only have results for children age six and up because we didn't select the younger age groups on the exposure group screen. Also, the cancer risks reflect a 10-year exposure period based on, our selection of, based on our selections on the exposure factor screen. You can see the 10-year exposure period reflected here in the ED column underneath the cancer risk heading. On the right side of the table, under the grayish brown heading that reads default shower model data with fast exposure parameters, you'll see results calculated using default fast exposure parameters. These results are the same as the quick summary results that we looked at earlier and are provided for comparison. You'll only get these results along with the site specific results if you imported a, a default scenario from the shower model. If you imported a custom scenario, default results won't appear and you'll only see site specific results in the screen. For the sake of time, I won't scroll down through all these tables, but you can look them over when you test out a site of your own. What I will do, though, is show you what happens when you click the Show and Parameters button, since we skipped over that earlier. I'll scroll back up and click that button now. Clicking that button causes the program to jump down to the bottom of the screen and open the Input Parameters table. The Input Parameters table shows all the inputs used to calculate the site-specific results we were just looking at, and provides the equations used to calculate the concentrations and doses reported in FAST. In the contaminant information section, you'll find the water concentration and average daily air exposure concentration imported from the shower model. And down in the exposure parameters section, you'll find the imported dermal doses. You'll also see the, that the exposure parameters table has a notes field at the right, and that the note we entered on the drinking water intake rate screen for the adult exposure group appears there. There's one more thing I want to mention before we leave this screen, which I won't show you now. But if you click on the download results button and export the 508 compliant report for these tables, the report will show only the site specific result tables and not the default tables. In the other fast exposure calculators, the 508 compliant reports would include both the site specific tables and the default tables for reference. In these reports, though, that would create a lot of tables. So the 508 compliant reports include just the, the site-specific result tables and not the default result tables. All right, so at this stage, we've looked at how to get both default and site-specific FAST results for a default shower model scenario. I'm going to show you one more thing at this point, which is how to get site-specific FAST results using a custom shower model scenario. To do so, I'll press the top link at the bottom of the page here to navigate back up to the top of the screen. 
And then I'll scroll up and click the import scenario data tab to go back to the import scenario data screen. Back on the import scenario data screen, I'll click the red X to clear out the default shower model scenario we were just working with now. Clicking the red X causes a pop-up to appear asking for confirmation that we want to clear out the data file. I'll click yes to go ahead and remove it. You can see that everything resets to the way it was when we first arrived at the exposure calculator. To show you a custom scenario, I'm going to load a custom, a custom scenario shower model fast export file that I created earlier to save time. The process for creating a custom scenario export file is the same as the process we used earlier to create a default scenario export file. After you run a custom scenario in the shower model, you click the export to fast button on the shower model report page, and it'll export the results of your custom scenario to a shower model fast export file. That takes a little while to do though, so I'll go ahead and click the choose file button on this screen and select the custom scenario export file I made earlier to load it into the program. Once it's loaded, I'll click the import button to import the scenario data. And then I'll click on the scenario information accordion so you can see what kind of custom scenario this is. You can see here that in this scenario, we're again looking at tetrachloroethylene and household water at a concentration of 100 micrograms per liter. This time, though, we're looking at a five person household where two people take morning showers and three people take evening tub baths. One of the people taking a morning shower is also helping the people in the evening take tub baths, which might be the case for a household with two adults and three young kids. In this case, the target person is the person helping the other three people take tub baths, since that person is the most highly exposed person. In the exposure group accordion, which expands when I click on it, you'll see that in this scenario, we've added an additional custom exposure group. In this case, I added the custom group seniors and gave it the exposure parameters that you see here. The, Adam cust the added custom group applies to the target person. So for this scenario, we're saying that the target person helping with tub baths in the evening is potentially a senior, perhaps a grandparent or another elderly person in the house. The other two accordions will show you the inhalation and dermal results from the shower model for this scenario, but we'll skip over those for now. I'll click the Select Exposure Route button to go onto the Exposure Route screen. The Exposure Route screen options are the same as they were for the default scenario. I'll select the option for residents using and drinking the household water again, so you can see how the intake rate screen changes for a scenario with custom exposure groups. You can see that in this case, because this was a custom scenario, the Run Quick Summary button didn't appear beneath the Enter Site-Specific Parameters button. We're already committed to a site-specific scenario at this point, so we'll need to continue entering site-specific parameters on the next screen. I'll click the Enter Site-Specific Parameters button to continue to the Exposure Group screen. On this screen, you'll see ATSDR Standard Exposure Groups on the left and our Custom Seniors Exposure Group on the right. On the left, you'll notice that the standard ATSDR exposure groups for children aged 10 or younger are missing. That's because young children typically do not help with baths. So for scenarios where the target person is someone helping with a tub bath, the shower model uses only exposure groups for people aged 11 and older. For our site-specific scenario, let's suppose that we know the target person is at least 21 years old. We'll select the adult exposure group, the pregnant and breastfeeding women exposure groups, and the seniors exposure group. For custom groups, we need to enter their exposure duration on this screen rather than the exposure factor screen. I'll enter a duration of two years for the seniors group and then click the enter intake rates button to move on to the intake rate screen. In the drinking water intake rates table, we see the four exposure groups that we selected just now on the previous screen. For the standard groups, we can use the default CTE and RME intake rates again. So I'll click the checkbox in the, in the upper left corner to select those. You can see that the site-specific intake rate fields for the adult, pregnant women, and breastfeeding women exposure groups change to gray, but the field for our custom seniors group is still active. 
Since seniors is a custom group, it doesn't have a default intake rate, and we'll need to enter a site-specific value. I'll type in an intake rate of two liters per day for the seniors group, and then click the Enter Exposure Factors button to continue. The exposure factor screen is the same for custom scenarios as it was for default scenarios, so everything here should look familiar. I'll leave the radio button for chronic, intermediate, and acute scenarios selected. For the exposure frequency parameters, let's leave the days per week at seven, but change the weeks per year to 50, and set the duration in years to five years. For the exposure duration in years, remember that the number we enter here will apply to APSDR standard exposure groups only, since we specified the duration for our custom seniors group back on the exposure group screen. Once that's done, I'll click the Calculate Results button to generate my results. The results may take a minute to load depending on how busy the server is and how fast your connection is that day. All right, looks like they're done. I'll scroll down a bit so you can see more of the tables. So here you can see a few things that are different from our earlier results for a different shower model scenario, for a default shower model scenario with site-specific fast exposure parameters. For one, these result tables only include site-specific results. They don't have default results for comparison next to them. The text in the blue heading is also slightly different in this case because these tables were built with custom shower model data. In general, the blue result table heading means that you're looking at site-specific results and a grayish brown heading means that you're looking at default results. You can see as well that the tables only have results for the exposure groups we selected on the exposure group screen. If you remember, the exposure groups for children age 10 or less don't appear in the result tables at all because the, dark, because the target person in the scenario is someone helping with the tub bath and young children don't typically help with baths. We don't see results for the 11 to less than 16 years group and the 16 to less than 21 years group in these tables though because we didn't select those on the exposure groups tab. If you compare the adjusted EPCs for the chronic and intermediate inhalation results, you can see that the chronic EPCs are slightly less than the intermediate EPCs. That's because the adjustment for the chronic EPCs accounts for the number of weeks per year that the exposure occurred, which if you recall was 50 weeks per year based on what we entered on the exposure factor screen. You can also see here in the chronic table that the adult exposure group has an exposure duration of five years for its cancer risk calculation, but the seniors group as a custom duration of two years that we entered on the exposure groups tab. As always, if you're having trouble figuring out how a number in the results table is calculated, you can click on the number and it will show you the num numeric inputs that went into it. Here in the adult cancer risk pop-up, for example, you can see the chronic adjusted EPC, the inhalation unit risk, and the exposure duration that went into the adult cancer risk calculation. If you want to see the actual formula associated with the calculation, you can scroll up to the top and click on the plus sign next to the show equations text above the navigation bar. When you click on it, it brings up a drop down menu with the equations used in FAST to calculate the different elements in the result tables. To look at the cancer risk formula, I'll click on the one that says cancer risk equation. You can see that the cancer risk formula shows up at the top of the screen. While we're here, I'll also mention the help button right above the show equations button. Both buttons are in other fast exposure calculators as well, so they may already be familiar to you if you've used one or the other calculators. Clicking on the help button brings up a pop-up that lists different documents and files that might be of use to you while you're working with the exposure calculator. If there's anything you're looking for and you can't find it there, you can also try looking for it on the FAST resources page, we can, which you can access by clicking on this tile at the top of the page or by clicking on the resources page link in the results screen introduction paragraph. Before we close, there's one more thing I'd like to show you. Scroll down to the bottom of the screen, you'll see the ingestion only results for a site specific scenario. If you remember on the intake rate screen, we selected, we selected the option to use default CTE and RME intake rates for ATSDR standard exposure groups, but for the custom seniors group, we had to enter a custom intake rate. In this table, you can see that we have both CTE and RME ingestion doses 
reported for ATSDR standard exposure groups, but for the seniors group, we only have a single dose, which is an emerged cell under the chronic dose column. To the right, the hazard quotient and cancer risk columns are set up similarly. You scroll up to the dermal only results, you'll see that there's just one dose, hazard quotient, and cancer risk for each exposure group. Unlike for a default shower model simulation, the shower model custom scenarios don't include CTE and RME results. Instead, custom shower model simulations run just a single scenario, and you get the results for that scenario only. As a result, the inhalation and dermal tables don't have CTE and RME results for a custom scenario. The ingestion tables can still have CTE and RME results, though, because they're calculated by FAST using the same logic used in the drinking water exposure calculator. So don't be surprised if you see CTE and RME results for some tables, but not others when you go through and run a custom shower model scenario through FAST. Scrolling back up to the combined doses table, there's one more important thing I want you to remember when looking at the results tables generated in FAST after importing the shower model results. Once you get to the results screen, you can generate a FAST shower model report. The report will walk you through the results and point out which tables you should use in your public health documents. If you have questions on what to do with the information in the reports, please contact the OCROC DAPS ADS offices. If you're an Apple Tree partner, work with your TPO to set up a conference call with the shower model SME or ADS. So at this point, that's everything I wanted to go over today related to the new FAST shower model exposure calculator. We'll have time for questions in a second, but down the road, if you have questions on anything, please take a look at the documents on the FAST resources page, since those have a lot of useful information about both FAST and the shower model. In particular, there's a FAST user's guide and a shower model user's guide there, and there's also an exposure dose guidance document for evaluating results from the shower model that might prove helpful. If you still have questions after looking through the documents, you can email fast at cdc.gov for questions about FAST or shower model at cdc.gov for questions about the shower model. All right, so that's everything. At this point, I'd like to open up the floor for questions and check, David, are there any questions that have come in through the chat? No, we haven't gotten any questions yet. All right. Well, if you have any, this would be the time to ask. Leslie, can you open up the lines? Absolutely. And then people can just ask their questions if they have any. So if you have a question, if you could raise your hand and then I will go around and unmute you. I do see there is a question in the chat. Oh, there, okay, I see it now. If you know it was a chronic exposure but don't know the amount of years for sure, are you only allowed to use the default setting? <clears throat> I'm gonna say in most cases, if you don't know the number of years of exposure, we would want you to use the default CTE exposure duration of 12 years and the RME duration of 33 years. Uh, if you have information that, that justifies using something else, then you could present it in your document as justification. Um, a lot of times we know that say a drinking water so source was only contaminated for X number of years. And so that's justification for using that particular value. So Will, could you go back to a default scenario? Would you load a default scenario? Mm -hmm. Yes. So I realize we've sort of thrown a lot of things at you. One of the things we wanted to make sure you were, are aware of is how flexible the shower model is. And that's done on purpose so that it could basically answer any residential question that came up that you might face. 
So we built that flexibility in there so you could change exposure duration and number of people in the family and everything. But I, I want to go back and show you how easy it is to run the model. So once you've imported the model, which, which, which is what Will has done, you're going to go to the next screen, which is the exposure route. And you're going to select one of these two. People are drinking it and showering in it, or they're just showering in it. So let's do the just showering in it. And then you're going to click Run Quick Summary. So in, in most situations where you have, where you have uh, drinking water contamination, this is what you're going to do. You're, gonna, you're going to run the shower model on the default. You're going to import those default results into FAST, and you're going to run this scenario, which is very simple. Will, if you'll click on um, Show Results. And so here is the table for inhalation only. So this is your daily indoor exposure concentration that uh, the target person is exposed to. And if you scroll down to dermal, so that's inhalation. And so this is dermal chronic. So here's your dermal results. And Will, if you'll do one more thing, scroll down and export to the Word document. 508. Yeah. Oops. So this happens once in a while. You just have to go back and rerun it. I'm going to refresh it. I have time now. A lot of times when you're playing in the shower model and you're, you're running and rerunning and rerunning, it'll, you'll end up with an error. Let me rip the whole thing real quick. Okay. So don't panic. You've not done anything wrong. You haven't broken the shower model. You can do what Will is doing and just start from the beginning and load it again. So what I, what I want you to encourage you to do if you get lost is generate a report. So you've, you've generated your results in FAST and now you are generating the report in Word from FAST. Yeah. And here, you'll go down to page nine. Here, you will go down to where the results start. And this is really going to walk you through everything. If, if you feel like you're lost because there's too many tables, um, go to this Word report and just read through this Word report because it's going to tell you how the tables are laid out, what tables are really important that you need to pay attention to, and what tables are provided for your information. So if you scroll down a little bit more, we're gonna look at the first table. So this is the inhalation table results for hazard quotients and cancer risk. And if you go down to table two, yeah, that's, sorry, that's intermediate and acute, and then go down to, I guess it's table four. Yeah, those are the dermal results. So if you go to this Word report, there's text that's going to help you understand the report and what's important and what you should be putting in your documents. And then, you know, I'm always available. Um, both ADS office are always available to answer questions. And you can send a your questions to showermodel at cdc.gov and we'll get back to you. So a couple of other questions have come in from Teresa. 
can you select different exposure times for showering and drinking? Different exposure times. I'm not sure. Um, different exposure times. <laughs> The, if you have a different exposure time, like one, one group is exposed for 10 years and another group is exposed for five years, you have to run those at, as separate runs. Will, you were going to add something? I was going to say that the, the exposure factor screen applies to all three exposure routes, so in, inhalation, thermal, and ingestion altogether. That if you come to, let's see if we can get there. Yeah. So the information you enter here applies to all three exposure routes together. So there's not a way on this screen anyway to enter separate ones for each route. Uh, did you run the program for TCE? Oh, many times. <laughs> <laughs> We're always looking at TCE. Does it allow combining the doses? We haven't. We haven't built that into FAST yet. We want to take a closer look at combining doses. Um, so we're, we're looking into that. Um, that's still our guidance that you can combine doses. Uh, but before we built it into FAST, we, I just wanted to double check that approach before we actually do it. So. Well, I love to hear when you're using the shower model. So please feel free to send me an email and let me know how you use it. Even if you don't have a question, I, I, I try to keep track of who's using the model because that's good for us to know. Okay, if I put five as water concentration, what is the air concentration? Okay, wait, I'm gonna do this calculation in my head. If you enter five parts per billion, as your water concentration, your exposure concentration is going to be 24 hours, five micrograms per cubic meter. Does it meet air regulations? I don't know, does it? I mean, there's a lot of smart people on here. Does that meet air regulations? People can jump in and give their opinions. I, I haven't they, looked it up. Is it asking for TCE in the default scenario? Yeah. Oh, we can run that real quick. If you want to look at it? Well, I already know the answer. It's five micrograms <laughs> per cubic meter. Oh, yeah. um, okay. But I, I haven't looked to see where whether that meets air regulations. Uh, the inhalation MRL is two micrograms per cubic meter. So for a four person household, it's slightly above the inhalation MRL. It's probably still far enough below effect levels that we would not call it a health concern. Okay, now we're getting a lot more comments. <laughs> no, that's too high. Okay, air regs for TCE, okay. So five parts per billion in a four person household, you will get a 24 hour average of five micrograms per cubic meter. And that does exceed the chronic inhalation MRL. But it's still below the effect level of 21 micrograms per cubic meter. Okay, well, I, I think that's it. We're, we're five minutes over. So thanks everyone for calling in. Um, let me know how things go with using the model. Bye everyone.